On November 1st, the Pixelmator team announced that they had plans to be acquired by Apple for what some are speculating to be over $119 million, which has left some to wonder why Apple is interested in this acquisition and whether this is a good thing for existing and potentially new Pixelmator users. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about all things Pixelmator. Today I'm hoping I can answer those questions as well as whether you should consider buying Pixelmator or Photomator today given the latest news. Now I've been making Pixelmator videos for literally years, but what some of you don't realize is that I've also been a professional iOS developer for the past 13 years. So I wanted to try to use that experience as well as what we know about Apple's 129 other acquisitions to try to peel back the curtain a little bit. So for those of you that haven't been following Apple as long as I have, their business can be broken down really easy and their strategy follows these two lines pretty straightforwardly. Apple cares about hardware sales and they care about what they've recently started calling services. Hardware sales are things like iPhones, iPads, Macs. Services are a little bit more nuanced. So that's things like Apple Music, iCloud, Apple TV+, Plus, things that bring in recurring revenue from existing customers. And so for some, it might be hard to see how Pixelmator or Photomator actually fit into either the hardware or the services camp. So let's take a little look at Dark Sky, which is a relatively recent acquisition that had similar questions about what Apple would do with it at the time of acquiring it. Now, I personally was never a Dark Sky user, but in the developer community, there was a lot of chatter when Apple decided that they were going to acquire them because people loved Dark Sky. And so when Apple announced the acquisition of Dark Sky, people's thoughts immediately went to the thought of, is this going to get shut down? And that was a really valid concern because Apple already had a weather app. And so even without looking at the strategy, it's clear that Apple doesn't need two weather apps on its platforms. And so if you tried to look at it through the lens of hardware sales and services, eh, hardware sales is a little hard. And so what Apple ended up doing was an interesting combination of these two strategies. They, of course, took features out of Dark Sky and incorporated them into the default weather app to try to improve that, make it better for customers. But what they also did was they took the back end that powered Dark Sky and they made that available as a developer API. But it's available at a subscription price. So all in all, it resulted in something that is useful for developers. It is good for people that use the default weather app, but is bad for people that love the Dark Sky app. So if we apply the same treatment to Pixelmator and Photomator, it raises some interesting questions. Pixelmator on its own is best described as a Photoshop competitor that comes in at a way better one-time purchase price and is only available in the Apple ecosystem. Now, I don't have access to any of the numbers, but I would be surprised if people actually were buying Macs specifically to use Pixelmator Pro. It's not like Procreate where people actually buy iPads and Apple Pencils specifically to draw with Procreate. But given the current state of Adobe attempting to offend all of the artists that use its platforms as fast as possible, it could be that Apple is actually attempting to capitalize on that opportunity and get people specifically to buy Macs in order to buy this product that is a pretty good competitor to Photoshop. On the other side of the aisle, Photomator is a Lightroom competitor. It has a subscription pricing model, albeit it also has a extremely reasonable lifetime pricing model as well. And so you can easily see how it could fit either. Because it has this subscription pricing model, they could be chasing services revenue, but they could also be trying to say to the creatives that are leaving the Adobe suite. Look, if you come to the Mac, we have both Pixelmator and Photomator. Great reasons to buy a Mac and start doing your design or photography job today on a Mac. The piece that is lurking in the background that people are afraid of is the same as Dark Sky. Apple already has a Photos app. Apple already had a Lightroom competitor. Apple already killed their Lightroom competitor and told people to either move to Lightroom or take the new Apple Photos app and use what features were left over from Aperture within it. And so if your fear is that either Pixelmator or Photomator is going to get the chopping block and end up tied into the default Apple Photos app, I don't think your fears are unfounded. There's history behind that. But here's why I'm optimistic that Pixelmator and Photomator aren't going to just disappear. Today, people don't pay money for the Photos app. The Photos app, drives a lot of services revenue by making people upgrade their iCloud storage. It is reasonable that they could want to drive additional services revenue directly through the Photos app, but in my opinion, they don't need to. Photomator already has a great presence. It already has a simple, clear pricing model that is separate from the Apple Photos app. 
And so I don't think you get any benefit from muddying the waters by saying, here's the Apple Photos app. If you pay extra, you get extra pro features within the same app. To me, the strategy works way better if you continue the iMovie to Final Cut or the GarageBand to Logic, where you have the free version that ships with your device, and if you find out you have pro needs, there's a clear upgrade path for you. And this would also fit with this new world where suddenly Apple has renewed interest by updating to Final Cut 11, by shipping Final Cut for iPad and Logic for iPad. There seems to be some amount of renewed vigor in serving this creative market and recognizing that there's opportunities to keep people buying your hardware and potentially your services by doing their professional work on a Mac. So if you want my opinion of what's coming next, I'll tell you this, I'm not shutting down this YouTube channel. We're gonna to continue to talk about Pixelmator. I'm gonna continue the Photomator Masterclass because I think that fans of these pieces of software have years of blue skies ahead of us. In fact, I think Apple's renewed vigor in the creative space actually bodes well for the rate that we're going to get new feature development. But I know a lot of people in the community have a lot of opinions, so let me know in the comments below what you think and what the most likely outcome is. And if you are also optimistic and you want more Pixelmator and Photomator content, make sure you subscribe. Like I mentioned, the masterclass is running right now. And so if you want early access to that and all the other videos, make sure to support me on Patreon. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.